the um, thing that's running through my head this morning is uh, the lack of accountability in Christians. We all seem to, and I'm including myself in this, we all want to excuse our behavior on certain things. Our, uh, we want to justify our beliefs in certain things. We want things to be the way we want them to be. We make the mistake of not always testing the spirits that are involved in our decision making. Um, there are a few hundred probably passages in the Bible I, I didn't count them that tell us that we're supposed to check it we can't we're not supposed to depend on our own understanding of it we're supposed to be led by the spirit of God by the Holy Spirit um, the Holy Spirit wasn't sent to us just to be a comforter in hard times I mean that's one of his big jobs but it's not his only job he's supposed to teach us and he's supposed to enlighten us the um, one of the things that we forget quite often is this one wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience hope that's not me among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but God who in his mercy or in whose is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sin hath quickened us together with Christ and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We can't even get saved ourselves. There's nothing that we can do to get to heaven. There was only one way to reconcile the mistakes made by the human race. And that was by a sacrifice. I know people argue biblical sacrifice law and uh, people try to push it down to it, it's all a matter of uh, grace, love, hope, and faith. I mean, those are all important, but it's, it's grace. We have to have faith in the grace. I mean, there's there's so much more to it. I mean, everybody gets hung up on what I like to call the milk of the word. And here's, here's the milk. Here's the milk of the word. There is only one God. He created everything that there is. Everything. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, who was born of a virgin, lived a flawless life, to die for our sins. The man Jesus Christ. Yeshua. Was beaten. Nailed to a cross. And died. For the perpetuation of our sins. For our ransom. The ransom of our souls. He was placed in the grave. He was a dead man. He was not in a coma. He was not. Uh, secreted away and nursed back to hell he was dead three days later the the tomb opened and he came out alive the one of the neat little things that's going around now is the fact that he folded his napkin the the, the, the piece of cloth that was on his face 
he folded it up and laid it back. The whole etiquette, Hebrew etiquette at the time was if a guest intended to return to the table, you know, if he needed to excuse himself or whatever, then he would take his napkin and he would fold it and lay it on his plate. That meant you just waited, he'll be right back. Everything indicates that, that Christ is coming back. But that, I'm, I got off track a little bit. But that's that's the milk of the word. God is God. Jesus is the son. He died for us. And the only way to get to heaven is to accept that Christ Jesus is the son of God and he died for you. And accept the Holy Spirit into your life. That's it. That's basic Christianity 101. That's the milk. The meat of the word, which is where accountability comes in, is what nobody wants to to know about. Because then they realize that it's not a free ride. It doesn't cost you anything to get to heaven. Jesus paid it all. Okay? But there are things that you are going to want to do deep down inside because you know that you owe Christ for what he did for you. There, it, you're, you're going to be, when the, the Holy Ghost comes into you, you're going to change inside. And it's no longer going to be okay not to do these things. And if you are okay with doing these things, then you need to do a self-check and make sure that you're okay. You need to make sure that you know, that you know, that you know. Not that you just really hope it's going to happen. And not that you're being naive. You can't put on the full armor of God if you're still wearing diapers and drinking out of a bottle. That sounds a little harsh. But until you're able to get up and make a sandwich for yourself and go out and pick up the cross and carry it, you're still just a baby. If you're still feeding off strictly the milk, if you think that's all you need, then you can't wear the armor and you can't you can't do anything for God if you're a child of God if you are have allowed yourself to be adopted into if 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 God has called you home and you are adopted into his family then you're going to want to do things you're going to want to pull other people into the house of God into the, the, the family of God. You're going to want to teach people the milk of the word. You're going to want to take these people that you've, that you've showed the milk to, that you've, you've, you've told Christ to. You're going to want to take these people and you want to help them grow. You're going to want to help them carry their cross. You're going to want them to learn right from wrong. Why there are things that we can do and why there are things that we can't do. It can be argued that there's no can and can't anymore. That the do's and don'ts don't matter. It may very well be true. But why would Jesus say that all the law is still there? Why would he say that nothing's going to pass? Nothing's going to be negated until he returns? He hasn't returned yet. So all those laws matter. Now, you people that argue that, well, my sin's not as great as the other guy's sin. I'm going to throw this one out there. Because a lot of people use this one. And uh, that abomination, you know, homosexuality is an abomination. Uh, 
the word translated to abomination for homosexuality is also the word used to describe uh, adultery. You, uh, you can't be sexually immoral in any way. That's not okay. God made man and God